In episodes 21 and 22, we went to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. There, we saw the original Wright Flyer, the Spirit of St. Louis that was flown by Charles Lindbergh, and Neil Armstrong's actual space suit. But what a lot of people may not realize is that the Air and Space Museum is one museum in two different locations. So in this episode, we're going to the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center uh, out by Dulles Airport, where we're going to see some of the most iconic aircraft from World War II. about the history of the United States without at some point talking about the role that aviation has played in the development and defense of our country. Which is why today I am at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum out by Dulles Airport. Uh, I know for a fact that there are a ton of artifacts related to aviation uh, in this museum. We're not gonna be able to hit them all. Uh, going to focus primarily on World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, but should be interesting. I know there's some cool stuff in here. Okay, so right off the bat, whenever you walk in, got a P-40 Kitty Hawk. Uh, this is a World War II plane that was used by Chenault's Flying Tigers uh, they flew in China against the Japanese. There's another iconic plane from the Pacific. This is an F4U Corsair. It's kind of different because it has this inverted wing. Something kind of interesting tied to this plane. Uh, Charles Lindbergh, who was very much an anti-war activist before the war, uh, ended up flying this plane in uh, bombing and strafing missions against the Japanese. It's kind of cool. Uh, typically World War II you focus on the combat aircraft, but uh, this is a trainer. This is a PT-22 recruit. So this is what they would have used to get their pilots trained up. So here's a Japanese fighter from World War II called the Nakajima Gecko. It was a three-seater that later got converted to a two-seater, and a lot of these were used by kamikaze pilots. Love these old leather flight jackets. So cool. So the crew would get somebody to paint the backs of them, kind of personalize them. These were actually government property, though. They weren't supposed to keep these, but many of them did. And this is, this is really cool. This is the uniform of General James Doolittle who led the famous Doolittle Raid after the attack on Pearl Harbor. They launched a bunch of B-25s off of aircraft carriers to uh, attack Tokyo, and then later got transferred to Europe and was uh, command of the mighty 8th Air Force. Very cool that they have his uniform here. Here's kind of an interesting one. This is a P-61 Black Widow. This was the first aircraft that was designed primarily for night missions. It uh, didn't really go into use until after D-Day, so you don't really hear a lot about them, but kind of an interesting aircraft. Yeah, the Hawker Hurricane. Yeah, we've got a little bit of British representation here. This is a Hawker Hurricane. Uh, so these were used heavily by the British in World War II, uh, helped win the Battle of Britain in the summer of 1940. I think this was the first British fighter to go over 300 miles an hour. Pretty iconic British fighter plane. Now uh, here is one of the iconic fighter planes from World War II, a P-51 
38 Lightning. Uh, this was used in every theater of the war. I always thought it had kind of a funny design. I'll try and get around to get like an aerial view of it so you can, so, uh, you can see the tail. But uh, these planes right here downed more Japanese aircraft than any other plane in the war. Pretty cool. So here's a uh, P-47 Thunderbolt. So there were more of these that were produced during World War II than any other fighter plane. So very, very popular aircraft of the Second World War. So this little thing here is another Japanese craft. And you can see it has like little bitty wings and everything like that. So it can't really fly as far as taking off. Uh, this was called an oka, which means uh, cherry blossom. They would attach these to Japanese Navy bombers and then drop them off the bottom and then uh, they would be used as uh, kamikaze pilots. Pretty crazy. All right, so here's a pretty iconic German aircraft from World War II. This is the Foka Wolf 190. These were the primary planes that got deployed against the B-17 bombers whenever they were launching raids over Nazi-held Europe. Hmm. Yes. Yes, this is good advice. Do not carry children on your shoulders, especially when you are way up here. Okay, so of all of the aircraft in World War II, there's probably none that are more famous, more well-known, or more iconic than the Enola Gay. Uh, this is the plane that on August 6, 1945, uh, took off uh, under the piloting of Paul Tibbetts and flew over Hiroshima and dropped Little Boy, the very first atomic bomb used in warfare, one of two. So the other one was Boxcar uh, that flew over Nagasaki. Um, that plane is on display at the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. But uh, this one's the first. Um, I think it's August the 4th right now. So I'm here almost exactly 74 years from the date that uh, this thing flew over Japan and uh, started the, the beginning of the, the very end of World War II. So cool to see this plane. This is a B-29. Um, probably not quite as sturdy as the, the B-17s. Uh, a lot of pilots and crews the, that flew on this aircraft really didn't like it as much as the B-17, uh, but it got the job done. Okay, so that was some of the uh, World War II aircraft here at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum out by Dulles. Uh, man, as, as a, a fan of World War II history, it's cool to see all of those planes in person. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move now, start looking at some of the planes of the Cold War that were used in Korea and Vietnam. Uh, but that will be in a different video. Listen, I don't even know what the heck this little thing is, but all I know is that there's not enough money in this world to get me in it. Bleah.